Fam, I had the foresight this morning to do the intro. And we are going to sample the avian water as well as talk about Kumba. Alright, so we're going to see what this avian water is about. It's about one quart, uh, 1.05 quarts. Alright, so we're going to see what this is about. We're going to taste it and then we're going to get into our discussion. Alright, I'm out. Oh, my fault. Join the show. Make sure you take the Google Saba Challenge. Peace. So, you know, it's time for the toast. Here we go. Bring them out. 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 Good morning, y'all. It's time for the toast. Uh-oh. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Sasha is, is checking me, all right, because I tried to do it before they woke up. All right. So, we are uh, experimenting with the avian water. And I told y'all, man, it's about the story, y'all. Let's so let's check out the story of this water here. Evian water starts as snow and rain on the peaks of the pristine French Alps, protected deep in the heart of the mountain. Each drop filters through layers of mineral-rich glacial sands for over fifteen years. Pure as nature intended. The water springs from the source in the Evian Les Bains, where it's been bottled since 1826. Ooh, is that, you know, this water costs almost $2, right? It's that story, right? 15 years. How do you know it took 15 years? You know, how do you know some of this water ain't have some shortcuts, right? And let's see. I'm starting to look for this on my water now. Um, let's see. I'm looking for ingredients. All right. This water doesn't have ingredients, but it does have a mineral composition. And I could dig that because it did come from rocks and from a mountain. 80% um, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and silica. Bicarbonate, sulfites, and chloride no is that chloride yeah that's chloride neutrally balanced ph 7.2 all right so y'all ready so we about to drink the water come on now drink with me fam come on now this is part of those of you that's on that challenge you know this is part of it you got to drink that water so we're gonna sample this avion because i'm i don't think i had this before No, baby. I think y'all refilled that. All right. Drink your water. Regardless of how you feel about it. 
France is a very lovely place. It's just something about these waters, man. Water is not supposed to have a taste. God damn. <clears throat> it, this one leaves a little something on the tongue. Right? It leaves something on the tongue. Now, I like my, 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 my water at room temperature. Maybe it would feel better if it was cold. But water is not supposed to leave anything. You know what I'm saying? And then also, those of you that's really on this alkaline stuff, listen, I'm with you. But remember, the body operates on the balance. Please, the body needs to be balanced. Nature is about balance, family. Our health is about balance. Too much alkaline and you won't be able to digest your food. You don't want to, you don't want to take it totally towards the alkaline when in fact you need some acids in your body. Parts of your body work with acid. Like for example, stomach acid. Alright, but let's stop. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this whole bottle. Damn, I feel like I'm licking the Alps. Ah. Family, should I finish it? Should I continue? Should I continue? We need to get to our toes. I mean, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. But you know, like I said, I like to steal water. But I'm sampling these waters because I'm going to the store. And everybody's talking about this alkalinity. And, and all these bottled waters are out. And they had sales on them. So I start grabbing them. Fiji is okay. Levion is not bad. You know what I'm saying? But it's not. What? I mean. Okay. If I was thirsty, yeah, this would be that lick. But since I'm not dying of thirst, I want me some distilled water. And guess what I got yesterday, fam? Because I'm going to start brewing maybe about Ujima next week because I got to kind of pace it. Because the weather is kind of cold right now. I want to make sure it get warm. Y'all know it's crazy. It took me five minutes to drink that water. Y'all know I usually finish my my water a little bit quicker than that. Ooh. I mean, now, if you're looking for a little bit more... Uh, I ain't gonna say not to drink it, but it's like if you... You know how when you drink something and you're not expecting... You understand what I'm saying? You're not expecting. I'm not... I, I don't expect any taste with water. Any taste, right? When water is water, unless I'm drinking tap water, I already expect whatever the tap is. You know what I'm saying? I'm expecting something. But when I buy water, I'm not expecting a taste, right? I'm not expecting silica. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm drinking water at the sand pile. Those from Akron get that one, right? All right, let's get to our toast. Excuse me, I'm doing my toast. All right, never stop being a father, y'all. Never stop being a father. All right, so now this is that death eater. That mature death eater. So, now, of course, if you get it, the bottle will be a little bit cleaner. That bottle's from a couple of weeks of brewing. As y'all can see, the color has cleared up. A little bit. This is a very mature drink. It's right on the edge of almost vinegar, but it's totally mature. Now, for those of you, for those of you who want it mature, but you want to kind of bring it back, you can drop a little bit of honey in a bottle and let it sit for a couple of days. Not even a couple of days, because this right now will attack that drop of honey and start producing car um, carbon quick. 
All right, so now first we're going to toast creator by whatever name you choose to call it, creator. We call on that universal force, that multiversal force that surrounds us and has blessed each one of us. And we say, I say, from there, we toast our personal ancestors, those that's new to this. We toast our personal ancestors. As I constantly say, Marcus Garvey, uh, uh, Malcolm X, Elijah Mark, they got plenty of people toasting them. Toast your grandmothers and your grandfathers and your aunts and your uncles, right? We toast them and we lift them up, right? We remember those individuals that took the time with us when we were babies. We remember those that helped us with our homework. We remember those that encouraged us in rough times. We remember those that coached us during football. We remember those that, that helped push us through college, right? Or those that, those of us that went to college. We remember those that taught us in the schools that really took the time. Um, Brother Shaka sends out the oldest Hasbury. Those that are on Facebook with me, feel free to put up the names and I'll toast them for you, right? You can toast them with me. Susie Smith from Miss Tiffany Smith. Uh, Charmaine Smith from Shaka Hasbury. It's important we remember our ancestors. It's important we remember our ancestors. Any more? Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert and Texana Davis, Herman Brown Sr., Rosalie Tilly, Georgia and William Walton, Crystal Fanny Gossett, Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris, uh, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, Cecil Ellis, Margaret Ellis, um, Mama Malika. Um, let me go to some of y'all's. I see they coming in. We got a um, Charmaine Smith. We got a, wait, we got a Susie Smith, a Charmaine Smith, a Aunt Evelyn. We got Jenny Clay. We got Teresa Clay. We got Harvey Hasbury Sr. Uh, Mildred and Herman Copeland. Any others? Uh, Mama Malika, Normal X, Elder Donaldson, Dr. Mary Ann Will Williams. Um, Jamon Jones, um, Jamon Jones, John for law, man, can't, oh, my brother John, brother John, went to Africa with me, was the first man here to meet my wife, meet my family over in Ghana, right, my brother, uh, yeah, I already got Jamon, y'all, you know I'm gonna get Jamon, right, um, Melvin Dale Hodge, any more? Keep them coming, keep them coming. Because our ancestors, man, y'all would be surprised how many blessings our ancestors bring into our life. Charles Wooden, any others? Going once, going twice, we say our shay. Next, we move on to this present moment. Today is near, we toast near, right? Our power is in the moment. So we toast Nia. Uh, we got another one that just popped up. Oh. Terrell Dunbar? The poet? They used to go to Ohio State? Oh. Wow. We toast, right? We toast this present moment. Um, I got thrown off by that. I'm sorry. Um. Today is Kaumba. We toast this pre present moment and we say, I say. Wow. Amina Robinson. We toast. Then we also move to our children, our children's children, on to infinity. We toast them and we say, I say. Last but not least, for any special projects y'all got going on out there, like the Black Phoenix, like Giame. Any of those special projects that y'all got going on out there, like Simple Circle, you know what I'm saying? All those things that we are working on in our communities to make our communities better, we toast them. You know what I'm saying? We ask our ancestors to work with us to help us build a better place for our children. And those, those of y'all on YouTube, yo, stick around because I'm telling you, I got, I got some information for y'all. The name of the, the name of the piece on YouTube today is called the impossible dream y'all need to check it out i'll be posting it up real soon so we toast all those things we say i say i say i need the glass out i say i say 
I say, family, I wish you peace, power, joy, and 100 years. I'm going to drink up. Mm-mm. Oh. Woo! Man, now I expected a taste for that. I feel like Ric Flair right now. Woo! All right, now, so Facebook, I want to thank y'all for, for, uh, for tuning in. I want to send shouts out to Tiffany Smith. I want to send shouts out to Shaka uh, CM Hasbury. Good to see you up and around, brother. Um... Uh, you need to get down here or, or get you some of this ambrosia so we gonna help you with some of that heart heart help. Ain't it, it ain't a cure though. I keep on telling you, don't be coming to me if you got some Don't you do it. But you come you come sit with your brother, man. Come sit with your brother. Alright. Um Miss Tiffany Smith, wherever you are, um, you got you got you a bottle coming too. I mean I can't if if I gotta mail it, you know what I'm saying? You gonna have to pay the shipping handling. I want you know, but like I said, Miss Tiffany Smith, you got got you a bottle coming. As soon as my next batch come, if you in Columbus, you got you a bottle coming. All right, fam. Uh, on Facebook, I'm out. All right. YouTube. Yo, hey, the impossible dream, right? I don't think I'm playing. Now, I'm telling you this next one. I'm gonna get in trouble. Bye, Facebook. Right? Cause I'm coming at y'all with some, with some, Goodbye, with some Facebook. ideas, right? See, cause a lot of people be talking revolution, but they really ain't talking no revolution. They just, Goodbye, they just Facebook. like, I'm still on, Sasha. So they just talking. So let's go and take our supplements. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to, it's going to be in a different format. So the screen is going to change. So, of course, you know, I try to keep it down to half an hour. But, you know, we have more people toasting. Now, I told y'all that this is a barometer for my toast. Just let you know that how the weather is here. And this is why I'm not starting. This is why I'm not starting to brew right now. Because my barometer is telling me that's a little bit too cold. So of course we start with the coconut oil. Coconut oil gives you uh, a shot of quick energy, and it's not the same type of energy that your body is used to getting a quick shot from. This type of energy is based on healthy fats, right? And this is what we're trying to train our body to burn. This is the ultimate energy source, right? Not, not the coconut, but the fat, right? We we're trying to. We're trying to get our, our body off of burning just sugar. Alright. Since we're going, since we pushing towards 5 o'clock without eating, we got to jump start our system. On Facebook. Y'all see she don't listen, right? I'm working with her. Alright. Hi, Facebook. That's not Facebook. That's YouTube. This is Facebook. Hi, YouTube. All right. Now he's gonna pour the red things. We're getting our beta. He's pouring the beta. We're getting, our, we're getting our beta carotene. That help with the heart as well, I think. A mm, few other things. Check out the red palm oil. Especially those of you that that are taking a part of the challenge where you are doing the African heritage diet. Go to the site that I sent you. Go to the site, and they got recipes. They have um, shopping list. It's incredible. As a matter of fact, hold on. I see All right. So, um, on those that took the challenge, I sent you the the food pyramid. Right. I sent you the PDF for that. I think, or at least I sent you a link to it. You go to the site. It's called Old Ways Nutrition. Old ways, right? Health through heritage. So, also on there, you can download. They have the African Heritage Diet 
shopping list. You see, you hear what I'm saying? A shopping list, right? They got common foods of African heritage diet. They got that, and they also offer re recipes. Alright? Alright. So, excuse me. So, now, let's do our, let's do our shop. Yeah, y'all, that's that, that black seed oil. <sighs> Woo! Alright. Now, last thing, and then we're going to get right into a piece. Y'all ready? We're going we're gonna to take another shot of that vinegar, y'all. Another shot of that vinegar. I'm like, man, if it's that concentrated... I want to get it, you know, because that vinegar is the ultimate. Y'all might not believe that, but vinegar, vinegar is the ultimate step. Go ahead. Woo! Man! Woo! Right. If you could take an apple cider vinegar, this is, this is, to me, of course, because I make it, it's a little bit better than apple cider vinegar, taste-wise. But same helping for right now. So I want to thank you for tuning in. We're going to switch to the next part. With that, i catch you on Imani, family. Peace. Great Kumba family. Yo, this is Brother Hot Tim coming at y'all. <sighs> and I want to share some information with you. Now, for those who believe that there's this thing called the impossible, you don't need to watch this, right? But for those who believe in the possible and believe in the true power of Kuumba, continue watching. Make sure you enjoy the show. Cause I got some. I got some. Ooh, I got it for you. Check it out. Peace. All right, fam. So here we go. Now, what you see here is this thing called loot net. And a while ago, I talked about this idea that I called Giamme Complex. Um, I was driving around Columbus, and I started noticing all these apartment complexes. And I started thinking about the plight of us, the plight of my tribe, the plight of my people. You know, I can't help but to constantly think about it. And I used to jog by a lot of these properties, especially up on the north side. You have a whole lot of these properties. And I wanted to show you something. For those that are interested, if you look up here, it says loopnet.com. And you go to it and you can look for sale properties, all properties for sale, right? And you can put location. I'm going to just put Ohio. Right? And I'm going to filter. Alright, so they won't take me through all this. I don't want to go through all that. Alright, click, click, click. And then, let me off that. Alright. Here we go. So, I'm looking at all types of property. I don't want all types of property. What I want to do is, I want to go to multi-family property. So, I'm going to click on that. Right? And I want you to look at the selections that pop up. All right. <clears throat> In Lorain, Ohio, we have West Erie Terrace Apartments. See that? $1,380,000. I know some of y'all are like, ooh, that's a lot of money, right? And then other people are looking at it, ooh, that's an investment possibility, right? But when we start talking about community when we start talking about building right we can't look at it just as a financial proposition in this apartment complex we got 60 units let's just look at it 1.3 1, 1, dollars right look at the property wow we got pictures of the property west erie terrace one bedroom, two bedroom apartments. Boom. Pretty small. 
nothing fancy. Pictures all messed up and stuff like that. Somebody just want to get rid. They're ready to get up out this property. That's all the pictures, right? That's in West Erie, right? And once again, we're looking at 60 units. Each unit is 23,000. Um, 23,000 for each unit, right? And I'm just, I just want y'all to think about this. This is apartment complex, which comes with parking. Um, um, it's it's uh, a property across the street from beautiful Lake Erie. It's, uh, uh, it's getting out of the business and looking to sell this 59 unit apartment complex. Up there it says 60, but now it consists of 36 one bedroom units and 23 two bedroom units. The three buildings are all brick and include two buildings with 24 suites each consistent of eight units per floor six one bedroom and two bedroom units per 24 equal 24. the third building consists of 12 two bedroom suites each suite has one full bathroom and a full kitchen including refrigerator stove to walls now you're like brother Hatim, what are you talking about now i want you to look at this property this property is a community i want you just imagine being able to purchase this as a group and deciding who lives in this. So this means people that come and go will be under, in a sense, we will decide who could live in the property, who could do what in the property. It's three buildings for parking. This is just an eerie. Let's go back. But let's go back to the search results. Let's bring it to closer home. I want to bring it closer to home. I've seen a nice property. It's, you know, kind of pricey but let's look at it real quick this is a nicer property newark ohio right outside of columbus i want to tell you because when i told y'all you know what i'm saying this this is dangerous thought i want y'all to think about this right so we have 112 units for nine million dollars like brother how to nine million dollars nine million dollars like i said if you are one of those with impossible thoughts right get off don't even listen. But those that I want y'all to understand what I'm saying, right? If a collective of us come together, it's 112 units. Everybody have to live in it. But what I want people to understand is, it's 112 units. Each unit is eighty thousand dollars. You get all of the space. They don't have the room, but this is basically the residence at Newark um, luxury rental lifestyle. Um, let's go on and read about it a little bit. First Guardian Group, as as ex exclusive advisors, please to offer for sale residents at Newark Apartment, which is a Class B garden style apartment located within Newark, Ohio. Residents in Newark Apartments is a 112 unit apartment community built in 1993, comprised of approximately 98,000 square feet situated on approximately 10.5 acres that consist of 14 wood frame residential buildings and three garage buildings. All units are unfurnished and offer amenities such as full kitchen appliance packages, full-size washer and dryer hookups, attached or detached parking garages, lost, vaulted seatings, private entrance. All units are individually metered for electricity which residents pay directly to the vendor Water, trash, and sewer are paid by the landlord, and residents reimburse the landlord for water. Each unit does contain a water heater, baseboard electric heating, and wall unit air conditioning. Unit flooring mainly consists of carpet throughout the living areas. Select units have vinyl plant, plank flooring and linoleum. Boom, boom, boom. We go through all that, right? It's 30 miles right outside of Columbus. Now, this is the issue, right? What would happen if a group of us started properly invested our money, saved up money, and purchased something like this. And maybe not Columbus. Columbus is a little bit bigger. How about um, something like in Grove City? Let's go Let's go back and let's just look at some more. Because I I'm I'm, I'm, I'm want y'all to see where I'm going with this. See, because I'm not just talking about uh, uh, purchasing a property. I'm talking about moving into our own community and taking over a city. I want y'all to understand what I'm talking about, right? This is not, this, you know, because as black folks, we can't be talking about necessarily integrating anymore. We got to start talking about compiling economic and political power. If we are able to get 
something like this. Let's look at Grove City, which is another small city right outside of Columbus. Now this is this this list things all over. So there's one in Grove City that has 16 units, one million three hundred ninety thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more reachable. Let's look at these multi-family units. All right. The 16 units. They're 86,000 a piece. Well maintained, updated mix of one and two bedrooms. One bath, ranch flat with laundry attached and one car garage. Rent very fast with many long term tenants. Excellent low maintenance property, additional two acres of Cross Road City Road can be available for additional $200,000. So we got additional land. So what if we just move into an area? And we just start, to dis we decide to start taking over area, starting with these complexes. So we see that these complexes can be anywhere from one to nine million dollars. We talk about Black Wall Street, but Black Wall Street was started by a group of individuals that live close enough to each other so that they could start at a center and start expanding out, right? What I'm saying is we can do the same because when we own an apartment complex, like this let's look at let's look at one in columbus when you own an apartment complex like this who is the government of the complex who could tell you what you put in here in 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 these units they have a centerpiece where you got the offices who, who says we can't put a barber shop in there and a beauty salon who says that we can't have a community center right in the middle of there who says that we can't buy the land that's across the street from here and open up our own charter school, open our own private school. You know what I'm saying? And I know y'all like, where the money going to come from, Brother Hot Tim? We have the money. It's just a matter of us properly, properly investing what we have and, and, and parlaying it to get this. You say, Brother Hot Tim, there's only 16 units. 16 units. There's only 16 units, right? That don't mean just 16 people invest, right? It means, what if we got 300 people? What if we got a thousand people? Everybody might not want to live in there, but they would love to know that they got something like this. They can have access to our community. They can have the, uh, access to the party. You know what I'm saying? They could come when we have, if we have a garden or a food co-op where we're selling products there, where we can have a bazaar once a month or something. When we have the land, we can control what goes on in the land. You know what I'm saying? If you're tired of your kids being harassed by police, if you're tired of being harassed by the police yourself, if you want to live in an area with like-minded people, right? I think this is something that we all work with, right? Regardless of what city we in, right? You know, I mean, because think about this. If we was to lock something down like this in Columbus, I ain't, let's say Columbus. Let's say we was to lock something down like this in Columbus. Columbus would be harder to to move into the government and stuff like that but i mean it's possible right so boom here we go columbus all right these are two units we got one here the price not disclosed it's just a, a building it's 72 units all right northern Isles on tamarack boulevard right we got this one right here for two million five hundred ninety eight nine thousand dollars it's 48 units Look at all that parking space. You know what I'm saying? Who says we can't build nothing there? There's several buildings there. We could look at we could look at something like that. Um, here's one with just five units for four hundred seventy nine thousand. Right? This one right here is five million. But oh, if you look at where it is, it's right at Ohio State University. So you know that one's always right. This is a nice house. I would like to get this one, but this is only two hundred. So this is a million dollars. Right, so that would that really wouldn't serve our interest. That's just hurt that 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 shit lot right there. All right, but anyway, let's just keep on let's let's keep on scrolling. Here's one Scottwood apartment, thirty six units, one million six hundred ninety thousand dollars. All right, here's another one, one million nine hundred ninety thousand four hundred forty nine units. Um, let's see, this is the last one. This one got 20 units. It's 875,000. But this on the west side, I don't like the way this is. This is just one of those where you don't got a lot of land and you got the parking. But then, but you know, we could start off with something and start expanding, right? 
when, it, when we talk about building culture, what happens when you bring people together of like mind and they have an area in which they control? Huh? What type of what type of political power will come out of that? What happens when we put a school behind that and we start educating our own kids, or at least we have the power to determine the curriculum of the school because we got a lot of people coming out of 100 units, coming out of 49 units, coming out of 50 units, coming out of 60 units. We got a lot of young people going to the school. Some of our adults were working at school. We could determine the curriculum for our children, right? We could determine what businesses will be around and why. Because we could build the businesses. We could find out what everybody needs and we could start providing what our people need bringing value into their life right so on this day of creativity i want y'all to i want y'all to think about this regardless of where you are look up loop net loop net right for yourself right here loopnet.com right look it up and start looking for uh buildings in your area you know what i'm saying we have to be in the area because i want y'all to think about this if we were able to lock down and get one of these one of these big nice properties with with you know like because i live in one where it's like it's almost gated in right what would stop people from other states from wanting to come with skills from wanting to come and be here they'll move here bring their resources and their skills here and we could really start building we could start getting people to run for city council Right? If it's in Columbus or if it's in Newark or if it's in Grove City, if it's in Groveport. You know, so let's let's see what's going on in Groveport. Well, there's only one building in Groveport. I've seen that already. So, but the ID is for us to start really looking at some of these real these real culture building and in a sense nation building opportunity. Right? Because I, I want you to think about this. How many of us got elders in our family that won't be able to walk up and down the stairs? How many of us would want to live in a complex where we wouldn't have to live right exactly next door to our parents, but we could take a short walk down the street to check on our elders, right? Our elders can have a place where they can go every day, sit down, have coffee, and have other elders and other people stopping in to, 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 to talk to them. And the coffee that they're drinking and the stuff that, 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 um, that they are using is provided by others. And the money that's being paid out is coming to us. I don't want anybody involved with this that's thinking about this just as a money-making proposition. This is a, this is a, a, a community building opportunity, right? So when you start practicing government in some form or fashion make sure that the streets are right save up enough money so we can build a building and in that building we can put a school in that building we can put a basketball court in that building we can put a workout room we can put a training facility up right we have workshops there from our little community and we can start purchasing the property that's around us and we can start really building right see because um you know that ambrosia is just a start for me Right. Ambrosia was one of the first things that made it possible for me to start touching capital. Right. But this right here is actually something that I could bring value to people's lives. Right. Because I we could create a community where we, in a sense, could police it ourselves. We could govern it ourselves. We could give our children a sense of purpose and, uh, and, and demonstrate. The stuff that we talk about we no longer got to point to the past or the great achievements we could point to the right now you see this you see this building that we living in right now i own this building you own all of this you know what i'm saying we live in this house right we live in this house and we're paying for this house but we we own it as a group we own it as a collective and you belong to this collective so when you go to school, you have to understand you've got to learn how to run this. you got to learn how to bring a business here so that we can expand. You see those apartments across the street? We want to buy those. You see you see that, 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 that big major grocery store over there? We want to own that or we want to own something that can compete with that, right? we got to start doing our children like um, Hannibal's father did him, 
this, that's your enemy across the sea over there. So now you know that it's your responsibility to start building and conquering. Right? That's that's the American way, y'all. You know what I'm saying? All this up. We're trying to bleed in and we're trying to spread out. I keep telling y'all the wagons are circling. Everybody's circling their wagons. And I'm saying this is one way where we can start circling our wagons. And buying old buildings is cool because this is the, you know, but we can also talk about buying new buildings because what I would want to do is I would want to get some of these properties or at least one of them, put everybody out because if we own it outright, we can go and raise the money and we can put all the, all, all update amenities on there. We could get, we, we could buy giant underground water reservoirs. You know what I'm saying? We could, um, very little thing so that it catch the rainwater, start purifying the water just for our property. You know what I'm saying? So that we can have quality drinking water regardless of what happens. We got a couple of thousand gallons hidden away just in case shit go crazy. Right? We can put solar solar panels on top. They got the new batteries now that we can go and buy the batteries and we can start storing solar energy and, and when we are not using it, we can sell it back to the city. You know what I'm saying? We could get geothermal heating. We could, we, we could get, and, and all this stuff, we have to train ourselves or train our young people how to do it. Who's going to maintain the solar panel? Who's going to do the experiments with the solar panel to see which ones are the best, right? Who's going to, to put them in a, play, in a proper place? We could train our kids over a job and, and career fields for our children, right? And once we start making money off of that one, as a community, we can sit out as a governing body. We can elect our own governing body that will be able to make a decision on what we purchase next. What the street we do. We go and fix the street. All right? We start. We need somebody to do that. We need somebody to take care of the ground. We got, we, you know, how many jobs can we just produce off of this? Because all of us pay rent or pay a mortgage anyway. Why not pay it and know that we are building at the same time, right? We all pay the water bills, we pay gas bills, we pay electric bills. What if we were to get a deal where we are able to get a portion of the money that everybody's paying on the electricity and this year will come right back to the collective. We're making money. Some people work for it, some people work for the organization, other people work outside. All in the city. Money on the money. Nah, this is, I mean, this, this, this is something so simple and right in front of our faces. We're looking for communities, and many of us are living in communities. The only thing is, we don't own it, nor govern it. Now, I'm just saying, why not start building something that we can govern? Why not, why not take it over? Why not blow up like that? That's all I'm saying. This is Brother Hot Tim, right? And I just wanted to share that with you on this Koomba day. I call it the impossible dream. And those of you who are on G and J, right? Those who are on G and J, those of you that's taking it to me one day and do the Sabah Challenge, you're starting to see the magic in your life. So you know that impossible takes a month. Impossible takes a month when we really start focusing our mind on it, right? And that ambrosia is one money maker's back venture. I know some of y'all other ones. Got some legit money making ventures. And all our money making ventures are about adding value to people's lives. That's about, yeah, let's put some money in our pockets. But it's not a it's not all about it. You understand what I'm saying? When we bring value, if we want to be a billionaire, we gotta find a way to service, serve a billion people. Bring value to a billion people's lives. And we could do that as a group, fam. We could do that. Only thing that's stopping us is us, right? So, this is Brother Hot Tim reaching out. I'm gonna ask you to like, share. You know what I'm saying? Look at this map, look at all these apartment complexes. And as time goes on, more of them gonna pop up. And, like I said, what would be best is if we look around Columbus, right? In, in these areas right around here, look at my hand. You see my hand over here? In these areas, like we got the hat, you know, we got all these little areas. Out, right outside of Columbus. Those of you that want to stay and work in Columbus, what if we had something like right in here? Right? Close enough to Columbus so that you can get there in less than 35 minutes, an hour, if, it's, if the traffic is bad. 
but we right out here in a plain city or West Jefferson. You know what I'm saying? Or a Dar uh, Darby Dale or Grove City. You know what I'm saying? Or Canal Winchester or Pinkerton or Riddlesburg. And we start our own township. Or we take over a township. Family. People be flying in from all over the country. Uh, putting in their applications so that they can move. You know? And because we own it, we can decide who we're here. We the governing body. Yo, this is Brother Hot Tim. I want to hold y'all up. I'm out. Thank you for watching the video. I want you to subscribe. Click the bird right there. The fiery bird. And I also have a special video just for you. Right there. And for those that want more information about Jamie Journey, go to our site. It should be right about there.